Hey everyone and welcome back to the Deep Dive. Today we're going to take a look at automation, specifically late node and make. You know, uh, you sent me this really cool article uh, comparing the two platforms and it got me thinking, you know, a lot of people are probably trying to figure out which one is better for them. You yeah. know, which one should they choose? Yeah, it's a it's a tough choice for sure. Both platforms have a lot to offer, but they definitely have different strengths, you know. Totally. Okay, so let's break this down a bit. Yeah. The article starts off by kind of highlighting this key difference, right? It says, make is perfect for beginners. You know, you don't need to know any code. You can just drag and drop and boom, you've got your automation. Yeah, it's very user friendly very visual, which can be helpful for people who are just getting started with automation, you know. For sure. But then there's late node. And it's interesting, right? They're kind of like, hey, we could do the whole no code thing too. Yeah. But we can also handle some really complex stuff. Yeah. You know, if you want to get into the nitty gritty and write some code, we're here for you. Right. Exactly. It's like make is the uh, the training wheels and late node is the uh, the full blown race car. Something like that. I love that analogy. Okay, so speaking of race cars, let's talk about pricing. This is where things get really interesting. The article has this uh, this visual, right, that shows how costs can really add up with Make's paper module model. I mean, you could end up spending a fortune if you're not careful, especially if you're dealing with large data sets or really complex workflows. Yeah, that visual is pretty eye-opening, I have to say. Make's pricing can be a bit deceptive. Totally. So late note, on the other hand, they charge you based on execution time, right? Uh, 30 second blocks. At first I was like, 30 seconds, what can you possibly do in that time? Right, seems kind of short. But then they go on to show in the article, this case study where late node was almost like eight times cheaper than make for a very common task. Yeah, and that really highlights the power of late node. You can do a lot in those 30 second blocks, especially if you're leveraging custom code and their AI features. Okay, hold on, custom code and AI. This is where I started to get a little lost, to be honest. Yeah. They mentioned this guy, Steen DeVos, who runs some sort of automation agency. And he's saying how Make struggles with array manipulation, and that's where Late Node's custom code comes in. Can you explain that for me? And for anyone listening who might not be a coder, like, what is array manipulation? So, imagine you have a spreadsheet with hundreds of rows of data, right? Uh -huh. And you need to, let's say, you need to translate all those product descriptions into Spanish. Okay. In Make, that could be a nightmare to set up. You might need a separate module for each row. Wow, good. With Late Note, though, you can just write a simple JavaScript function to loop through all the rows and translate them in one go. So you're saying it's way more efficient? Much more efficient and elegant. Okay, so that's the code part. Where does the AI come in? So the cool thing is LateNode has this built-in AI assistant that can actually help you write that code, even if you've never touched JavaScript before. No way. It's pretty amazing. The article even gives an example of using the AI to translate an array of data into Spanish, all in one step. Wow, that's pretty incredible. So you don't even need to be a coder to take advantage of this really powerful feature. I'll admit, I was skeptical at first. But this is sounding really cool. Mm. But what about when you're dealing with websites that don't have an API, you know? Yeah. I've run into that wall so many times trying to automate something, and it's just impossible because the website doesn't have an API. Yeah, that's a common problem. But Late Note has a solution for that, too. They have this headless browser node that basically acts like a virtual assistant that can browse the web and interact with websites for you, even if there's no API available. So it's like... Even those websites that try to block you from automating things, Late Mode finds a way through, huh? Exactly. Now, that's what I call thinking outside the box. It sounds like Late Mode is packing some serious power. Anything else that makes it stand out? I remember the article mentioned a bunch of other features. Well, I think one thing that's important to highlight is that Late Mode is really designed for flexibility and scalability, you know? Mm -hmm. It can handle those really complex automations that make might struggle with. Can you give me an example? Sure. So, for example, with Late Node, you can merge different branches of your workflow, which can save you a ton of time and effort. Merging branches. I don't quite follow you. Can you break that down a bit more? Okay. Let's say you have a workflow that checks a customer's order status. One branch might check your internal database, while another branch might check a third-party shipping provider's website, right? Okay. Got it. With Late Node, you can merge those branches back together to get a complete picture of the order status. May, might require you to create two separate workflows for that, which can get really messy. Ah, I see. 
So late note gives you more control over how your workflow kind of splits apart and then comes back together. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. I think I also remember the article mentioning something about multiple triggers. Yeah, that's another big difference. Unlike Make, where you're usually limited to a single trigger for each workflow, LateNode lets you set up multiple triggers within the same scenario. Oh, wow. That's really cool. So you could have like an automation that runs both when a new user signs up for your newsletter and also on a specific schedule, like every Monday morning. Exactly. It's like LateNode is anticipating your needs before you even know you have them. Okay, so we've talked about branches and triggers, but what about data? I vaguely remember the article mentioning something about data enrichment nodes in late node. What are those all about? Basically, they're these pre-built modules that let you pull in data from a bunch of different sources without needing separate subscriptions or integrations, you know? So it's all about making it easier to access the data you need. Exactly. For example, you could use a data enrichment node to automatically find someone's LinkedIn profile based on their email address. Wow, that's handy. Or get company information based on their website domain, things like that. So it's like having a built-in research assistant right there in your workflow. Pretty much. Yeah. And that can save you a ton of time, especially if you're doing a lot of research or lead generation. That's really cool. And I bet it could make your automations a lot more powerful. Speaking of powerful, the article also mentioned this really neat debugging trick in late node, something about restarting requests from your history. Can you tell me more about that? Sure. So imagine you're testing out a workflow and something goes wrong, right? Instead of having to recreate all your test data and run the whole thing again, LateNode lets you just restart the request from your history. No way. You can even modify the data before you restart it, which is super helpful for troubleshooting. That's brilliant. I can't tell you how many times I've wasted hours recreating test data. LateNode has really thought of everything, huh? They've definitely put a lot of effort into making the platform as user-friendly as possible, even for complex tasks. And that attention to detail extends to deployment, too. Deploy. Yeah, getting your automations up and running. LateNode lets you create separate development and production versions of your workflows so you can safely test out new ideas without affecting your live automations. Ah, that makes sense. So it's like a safety net, right? You can experiment and tinker without worrying about breaking something important. Exactly. And once you're happy with your changes in the development environment, you can seamlessly switch over to the production version. Okay, I'm starting to see how this all fits together. Late node seems really well thought out from start to finish. But I do have one more question. The article mentioned something called sub-scenarios. It sounded really intriguing, but I didn't quite get what they were all about. Ah, uh, yes. Sub-scenarios, or nodules as they're sometimes called, those are where late node really starts to blur the lines between no code and pro code. Okay, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. They basically let you create these custom reusable modules. It's almost like building your own mini workflows within late node. So you can create your own custom actions, essentially. Exactly. And here's where it gets really interesting. Late node is actually planning to launch this whole community module library where users can share their custom nodules. Whoa, really? That's amazing. It's like an app store, but for automation. I love that idea. So you can have people building these really specialized modules, and then others can just grab them and plug them into their workflows. Exactly. It's going to make late node even more powerful and accessible, especially for people who aren't comfortable with coding. Totally. It could really accelerate the growth of the whole late node ecosystem. But let's be real for a second. You know, Make still has a huge following. Mm -hmm. And for good reason, right? It's so easy to use, especially for beginners. It's hard to beat that simplicity. You're right. Make definitely has its strengths. But I think what's really cool about Late Node is that it doesn't force you to choose between the two. What do you mean? You can actually integrate Late Node into your Make workflows. You can use webhooks to connect them. Wait, so you can actually use both platforms together. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty slick. You can use Make for those initial steps in your automation where simplicity is key and then seamlessly hand things off to late node when you need that extra power and flexibility. So it's kind of like a best of both worlds situation. Exactly. You can start simple with make and then as your needs grow and you need more advanced features, you can gradually incorporate late node into your workflows. That's amazing. Yeah. And the article even gives some step-by-step -step instructions for integrating late node with Zapier, which is super similar to make. Yeah, the process is pretty straightforward. So it's not like you need to be some kind of tech genius to get this all set up. Not at all. Okay, so to sum things up, for anyone listening who's trying to decide between late node and make, here's what I'm gathering. If you're just starting out with automation 
and you value simplicity above all else, make could be a really great starting point. But if you think you're going to need more complex automations down the road, or if you're dealing with a lot of data, or you know maybe you're just really budget conscious, late node might be the better option in the long run. Right. And don't forget about that AI assistant in late node. Even if you're not a coder, you can still unlock some really powerful features with the help of the AI. Exactly. It's like late node is saying, you don't have to be a pro to automate like a pro. That's a great way to put it. And honestly, after diving into this article and talking to you, I'm really impressed with late node. It seems like they've really thought of everything. I agree. It's a really impressive platform. It's like they're not just building a tool, they're building an entire ecosystem. Yeah. You know, with the community module library and all the AI features and the flexibility and scalability, it feels like they're really pushing the boundaries of what's possible with automation. They are. And it's exciting to see where they go from here. It makes you wonder what the future of automation holds, you know? I mean, just a few years ago, this kind of technology was only available to big companies with huge IT departments. Right. But now, with tools like Late Node and Make, anyone can automate their work and free up their time for, you know, more important things. Exactly. And it's not just about saving time, it's also about, you know, reducing errors and improving efficiency and consistency. It's really about empowering people to work smarter, not harder. I love that. It's like the democratization of automation, right? Everyone should have access to these tools. Absolutely. And, you know, speaking of community, the article mentioned that Late Note has this really active forum where users can connect and share ideas and help each other out. Yeah, it's a great resource. So if anyone listening is feeling inspired to, you know, dive into the world of Late Note, I definitely recommend checking out their forum. It's a great way to learn and connect with other people who are passionate about automation. And who knows, maybe you'll even be inspired to build your own custom modules and contribute to the Late Note ecosystem. The possibilities are truly endless. That's a great point. Okay, so I think it's time to start wrapping things up. We've covered a lot of ground today. We have. We've talked about the key differences between Late Note and Make. We've looked at their pricing models, their features, their strengths and weaknesses. And hopefully we've given you a better understanding of which platform might be the best fit for you. We've seen how Late Node offers this really compelling combination of power, flexibility, and affordability, which makes it a really attractive option for people who are serious about automation. But ultimately, the best choice for you is going to depend on your specific needs and your goals. What are you trying to automate? What's your budget? What's your comfort level with code? These are all important questions to ask yourself. And remember, you don't have to figure this all out on your own. There are tons of resources available to help you make an informed decision. You know, check out the Late Note Forum, read some reviews, experiment with both platforms, and see what feels right for you. That's great advice. So to wrap things up, I just want to say to everyone listening, don't be afraid to explore the world of automation. You know, there's some amazing tools out there that can help you streamline your work, boost your productivity, and free up your time for the things that really matter. Exactly. So go out there, experiment, have fun, and see what you can achieve with the power of automation. That's right. The world of automation is waiting to be explored. And that's it for our deep dive into the world of late node and make. We hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, happy automating. Happy automating. So much to unpack with this stuff, huh? We've talked about so much with late node and make, like comparing how they work, what they cost, you know, even their whole approach to automation is different. Yeah, it's really fascinating how two platforms can tackle the same problem in such different ways. And, you know, beyond just the technical stuff, I think it's really cool how automation is kind of changing the whole game. You know, yeah. it's not just for big companies anymore. Totally. It's like anyone can be an automation expert now. Exactly. And I think that's what's so exciting about it, right? It's like this whole world of possibilities opening up for people. I think a lot of people get intimidated by automation. You know, they think it's too complicated or they need to be a coder to do it. Oh, yeah, I totally get that. It can seem really daunting at first. But honestly, it's not as hard as it seems, especially with tools like Make and Late Node. You know, they make it so much easier to get started. They really do. And even if you run into problems, there's so much support out there. You know, yeah. like the late note forum, for example, is amazing. Yeah, the community is super helpful. So I guess my advice to anyone listening who's maybe on the fence about automation would be, you know, just give it a try. What have you got to lose? Right. You might be surprised at how much you can achieve, even with just a little bit of effort. And who knows, you might even enjoy it. It can be kind of fun, actually. Yeah, I do. It's like solving a puzzle, huh. you know, figuring out how to automate a task and then watching it all come together. 
That's a great way to put it. It's like you're teaching a computer to do your work for you. And who doesn't love that idea? Exactly. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I think that's the message I want to leave people with, you know? Don't be afraid to explore the world of automation. There's some amazing tools out there just waiting to be discovered. And the possibilities are truly limitless. That's it for this episode of The Deep Dive. Thanks for joining us. It's been a pleasure. And until next time, happy automating. Happy automating, everyone.